Hello Internet World. Don't try anything you see here at home. This is for educational purposes only. So my last video we uh, tried reloading a, a bird shot using gun cotton. Uh, but I used the, the uh, shotgun primer that came with the shell. I just emptied the powder out, weighed the powder, um, added gun cotton back in the same weight as what we took out of it. This time um, I, I wanted to try doing that again but I wanted to do with slugs. Um, and I couldn't find where to buy slugs, um, you know, of any quantity, at least that have any good price. But I went out and I bought them old, and I casted a bunch of my own slugs. Uh, these are uh, 7 eighths gram, uh, 7 eighths of a gram slug, and I bought uh, some factory-made shotgun shells that, that have uh, one ounce slugs, because I couldn't find the others. So anyway, back to the primer stuff. So... What I did was I decided to look up a few recipes. This is a uh, uh, this particular mix is uh, non-corrosive, but it's harder to find the stuff. This particular mix is the one I'm using. It is corrosive, uh, but it's a lot easier to get the stuff. If you want to see this, just freeze the uh, you know, pause the video and look at it. Now, so what I did is I mixed all this stuff up, and I wanted to find a way to. Um, put it into the caps easier and the videos that I've seen from these guys using it They're taking the stuff as a dry powder and they're scraping it into the primers Then they're adding the little anvil back together uh, uh, They're putting it in the cup the little cup that's on the back of the primer Then they're putting the anvil back in the piece that holds the cup and then they're squishing them back together Okay, and it, it just seemed kind of tedious because they were using powders and it could go off as a powder Some guys were wetting it with acetone so what I did was I took the, I made the mix, the uh, H48 mix again, this one, and I mixed it up with a little bit of acetone and I made nitrocellulose lacquer mixed with it. I made it, the lacquer just thick enough, put just enough nitrocellulose in it to where it uh, um, would glue it together if it dried, but not so that it was so hard you couldn't break it apart. If you put too much in, it won't go off. So I got some in here and what I would do is I would take the cap, I would pound it apart, you know, you get your little hammer and everything, and you take it out of the shotgun shell first, then you pound it apart. And what I was doing is I would take this stuff, and I, with the acetone mix, that's, that's my primer compound, and I would put a drop right in the back of the cup. Now, I would fill the cup, and I would let it set for 10-15 minutes until it all evaporated off. Did this three or four times until it was almost completely full of uh, primer compound. Then... Well, it was still wet. You must do it while it's still wet. It'll go off when you do it. I put the anvil back in the piece that holds it. And then I put it, uh, the uh, uh, cup back inside of the holder. And those worked pretty good. But I wanted to make sure that I had even more power. Because, you know, some stuff need a lot of ump and a primer to set it off. So what I did is I went and got a non-pointed, in other words, a blunted syringe that had a fairly large needle. This needle is uh, big enough so that it won't be plugged up with the par particles that are floating in this solution, but small enough so that it will go through the hole in the shotgun primer. So what I did is I loaded it the way I just explained, placed it back together while it was still wet, okay? And then I would put some of uh, more of the compound in the top of it and let it dry more on the top and let it dry I did that several times until it was full of the hard compound and that makes a hell of a lot more powerful primer okay so now how we're going to test this is we're going to chronograph we're going to do this tomorrow because i'm doing this at night uh the night before we can do the test um first we're going to shoot or in in one of these orders anyhow whether it be this order or not i don't know but we're going to shoot one one ounce slug that was purchased okay then I am going to, I took apart another one of these purchased one ounce slugs, took out their slug and their wadding, added my own wadding and one of my slugs because it's lighter than the others, okay? So these should actually be light loaded. We'll see if that's true or not. Um, because I wanted to see what it chronographs at with the same weight slug with the factory powder load for the one ounce slug. Okay. Then what we're going to do is I've got another case right here that's uh, got a factory primer in it, but no powder in it. Okay. So we've got the gun cotton here, weighed out the same amount 
uh, that was in of, uh, uh, of gunpowder that was in the one ounce slug. Remember, this should be a light load, but since the, the gun cotton is so much finer than the gunpowder, this could still explode. So don't try anything you see here at home. This is an experiment. So then I've got my little cup there for my primer. I mean, for my uh, slug, we got the um, nitrocellulose in there. So there we go. There's one slug loaded with smokeless, I mean, uh, with nitrocellulose, my slug, but a factory primer. Over here, we have another primer. This primer here is one that I loaded. I don't know if the cameras can see it at all. I'm not going to get too close because this camera is like to focus, but it's got a little ding still in the back. I couldn't get the ding out of it. Uh, but this is one of my extra heavy loaded primers right here. Um, and we got the exact same weight of nitrocellulose here. So we've got the homemade primer to set it off, and we've got the homemade propellant nitrocellulose to shoot it. Remember, we will chronograph all of these. We've got our little plug here, and we've got our other slug. I'm not going to roll crimp these. There's really no point in roll crimping them. I'm going to end up making one more of these uh, for, the, for the shooting video tomorrow. So, um, stay tuned if you would like to see how these chronograph, or maybe if it blows the gun up or not. <laughs> Who knows? check um, I'm gonna holler out the feet per second because I can't move the camera around I have a camera guy plus I want to hide um, I'm gonna start with a factory loaded 12 gauge one ounce slug uh, the factory one make sure I ain't gonna hit my chrono and I'm going to move the board every time, or try to, so I can hit a different spot. That way we can have some idea how much power it's got. Okay. Chrono says... blinked off too quick but it uh it looked like it showed uh 2000 feet per second and i don't believe that's even possible okay so now we're gonna try gunpowder uh regular gunpowder with the lighter slug that really sucks that we didn't get any chronograph info off that Case is stuck. All right, that sucked. I don't know why it would stick. That's a factory load. Sure, I ain't hitting anything I don't want to again. Try to find a different spot. Don't know why it's stuck. So this is the seven eighths of an ounce slug, not seven grams like I said earlier. Pretty much did the same thing. That one came right out. So, uh, oh, that's uh, it says $23.99. I don't see how it could possibly be that fast. And I blew off the cover. OK. 
okay. So, this is gun cotton with my sl homemade slug pot. It's um, a regular primer and uh, gun cotton. Got to move this a little more. So here's the gun cotton. Slug regular primer. Just like the rest. Blowing holes with ease in that. And it's 14... 1475 with the gun cotton. Once again, that shell didn't want to come out. I probably should have cleaned my gun. Don't know why they're sticking. Okay. Shell looks good. So now we've got a light loaded homemade primer and gun cotton. Try to get that up a little bit higher. So far, they've all blown straight through the two by twelve, uh, two by ten. There, it's pressure treated too. So more gun cotton. That flew straight through it too, and that's seventeen oh two. That's a was a homemade primer. This is the last one, and uh, this is a double loaded H48 homemade primer. If you stay tuned, I saw that, uh, that the recipes didn't show up on the video. If you stay tuned to the end, I will videotape the uh, recipes again so you can see them. That one came out. So this I expect to be the hottest one of all of them for the homemade stuff. Let me... Uh, Point it over here. Okay. So we're aimed at a new spot again. This is the last one. This is homemade primer that's double loaded homemade primer with gun cotton. Oh. Help if I pulled the hammer back. <laughs> And again, blew right through it, and that one ejected. I think my shotgun's just dirty from the other experiments. Oh, and that was 1327. That's interesting. It slowed way down compared to the others. All right. As you can see, the uh, gun cotton loads are no joke. They blew right through shit. Uh, they were a little slower than the... Uh, uh, powder loads, but that's kind of expected. Um, well, stay tuned and I will show the recipes again. Here are the two recipes. I stole it off the camera to see it. So, this is the mix I use the H48 Primer Mix. It's made by, um, oh, what do they call it? Primal Company, or you can buy a kit. I didn't buy a kit, which is nine grains in antimony sulfide. Three grains of sulfur, four grains of ground glass, two tenths of a grain of baking soda, two tenths of a grain of aluminum powder, and then finally 17 grains of potassium chlorate. These can be mixed normally. Be very careful when you mix this. Then what I did, I'll give you a recap, as I added it to this bottle with a little bit of acetone and um, nitrocellulose, making a nitrocellulose lacquer just enough so that it makes a it crusty when it dries. If you put too much, it won't go off easy. This other primer mix is a non-corrosive primer mix. It's 11.6 grains of lead nitrate, 11.6 grains of lead hypophosphite, but you'll have to make that. You, you probably can't find it to buy it. And then uh, 5.0 grains of glass grit, and then 5.0 grains of 
powdered nitrocellulose or ground up gunpowder to give it a little extra zip. And I've also seen the same recipe with a teeny bit of amount of aluminum powder added to it um, to make it more powerful. Okay, you could also use, and I don't recommend this because it's really scary touchy, you could use 70% uh, 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 potassium perchlor, I mean uh, chlorate, sorry, potassium chlorate, and 70% uh, uh, and 30% uh, uh, pure or like 98, 99% red phosphorus. And then do the acetone trick with a little bit of lacquer. You can do that. Or you can also make uh, lead stiffenate, uh, which means you'll have to make some stiffenic acid from a chemical called resorcinol. And then turn that into sodium stiffenate. And then do a double decomposition reaction to make lead stiffenate. And uh, that's what's used in most commercial primers. But yeah, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. This was a really fun one to make. And I will tell you that I'm comfortable enough with these loads of nitrocellulose rather than smokeless powder and primers to where if I needed to go out hunting, I would definitely end up using um, my hand loads with nitrocellulose and stuff if I could not get factory ammunition. Well, thanks for watching.